Yeah. Welcome to All Set for Sunday, a podcast for busy and distracted Catholics to be a little more prepared for Sunday Mass. My name is Scott Williams. My co-host is Jeff Trailer. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Man, I could not be better. I've yeah. got a fine Italian soda with me. Uh, I just had a nice hearty lunch. Yeah. Uh, some amazing pastries, and we are hanging out with one of our friends in a really cool spot. But where are you? <laughs> I ours at ours, ours <laughs> baby, <laughs> a pirate's favorite coffee shop in Dearborn County. As we like to say, Father Jonathan Meyer, how are you? It's yours. It's mine. It's ours. Oh, that's very good. Put that on a t-shirt. Well, it's on a bunch of yard signs that are on there. <laughs> I saw him by the door. Yeah. We'll grab one on the way. Grab one. So that'll, that'll incredible. confuse people. All right, we're gonna get back into ours here in a second, <laughs> but we're in a coffee shop. Just kind of pretext. What about Father Tim? So anyway, so seminarian. One of the seminarians of our diocese contacted me. He was like, hey, Father, we just had a great day of recollection. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. Who, who gave it? And they're like, Father Tim. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's great. What are you talking about? He's like, the Eucharist. And I was like, oh, you know, Father Tim's a good friend of mine. Like, that's really awesome. He goes, Father, obviously, he's brilliant. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Luckily, he doesn't listen to this podcast because he wouldn't need to just hear that. The, first, the first thing I do is I call Father Tim. And I'm just like, Tim, you will not believe, like, what just happened. And like obviously you're brilliant and he's like i didn't even talk about like because i don't think i've i mainly talked about my own experiences like mm-hmm. i didn't even like say anything brilliant you know you know what i'll bet he talked about rome when he lived in rome oh <laughs> that's all he ever talks about <laughs> talking about italian soda is... <laughs> that's incredible all right so we we're at ours cafe is it ours cafe is that what it's officially it's called, called it's called ours cafe and meeting house oh so wonderful it's a place for people to meet each other and to be together. And it's in Dearborn County. I just, I, 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 we drove right past your, one of your churches yep. right down the street. Which one is that? That is All Saints Parish, the St. John the Baptist campus. And next year, St. John's will be celebrating its 200th anniversary of Catholicism. Wow. That's incredible. Yep. And you opened a coffee shop. All well, Saints Parish. Parish it's a ministry of All Saints Parish. And it is to be clear, to be clear, it's <laughs> a ministry of All Saints Parish. And it is, it exists for a place for people to, yeah, just spend time, quality time together is a place to ev- evangelize, encounter people. And uh, like right behind us uh, on my right is a youth group meeting. And we have yeah lots of people in here today. Actually, all the tables were filled just a mo- moment ago. Family was just behind us. Um, so just lots of great things. That's awesome. So clearly it's just a, there's a template for something like this. You copy and paste it and then yeah, your church can you didn't have to work very hard at it at all, right? Mainly from the Protestants. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, people have been creating just common places for people to have stronger relationships and uh, for very, very long times. But as we know, they've often, a lot of times things in our world, it's just very hard. Like, where do you go? Like to a bar? Yeah. Like, where do you go yes. just to genuinely encounter somebody? And also, I would just like to also say that like a lot of coffee shop culture is now toxic. Mm. Mm. They've yes. jumped onto a woke bandwagon and it's hard to, to just find a place that you can go that's safe and so we wanted to create that here and praise the lord we're in day seven and it's been overwhelmingly so today is when you rest uh no we rested we were not open yesterday this is the Got first it. day of the second mm. week thank you well of sure we are is going to have some more questions about this <laughs> later but so, we, the so we are in Dover, Indiana. Is that what you said? You sound like some of the people that I've been a pastor of before. <laughs> ours. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I, we talked Dearborn County, but we're specifically in Dover, Indiana. We are in Dover, Indiana, which Wonderful. is the, the Guilford mailing address. But yes, Dover, Indiana. We are just, just outside of Cincinnati would be the nearest large Lawrenceburg. city. We would Lawrenceburg. Be Lawrenceburg. Got it. Wonderful. Okay. Batesville. Well, yes. Aurora. 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 Then the pastor yes. of Aurora. Yes. Totally. Well, you're the pastor of all of Dearborn County, correct? Correct. In Solidum. Yes. With Father Hollowell. Yes. Who's in Lourdes right now. Which is awesome. It is amazing. All right. All right. We got more to talk about that. But Context. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut my mouth here and listen to the two-minute drill. All right. Two-minute drill. It is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Mm, it's a good Wait, one. Can I tell you a little fact I learned? I from my, Which... Shame on me for not having like put this together and done it. But my seventh grade daughter, Charlotte, 13 years old, hey, Charlotte. Scott's a big fan. Uh, Charlotte was telling me about where ordinary comes from and describing ordinary time that it's not just like usual or boring, but it's about how it is ordered and organized. Hmm. And that's why they call it ordinary. And I was like, well, I should know that. And I said, you're going to get a shout out on the podcast tomorrow. So there we anyway, go. 
Is that correct, Father? It's beautiful. Yeah. I'm just, you didn't say it was correct. You didn't say that's correct. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go with it. Good job, Charlotte. All right. Uh, 28 Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 25. Mm-hmm. So Isaiah starts in and he talks about this beautiful uh, encounter that we're going to have in heaven, specifically a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines, which I love that he emphasizes those with juicy and pure um, but that what do you mean emphasize it's not italicized. No, no, but like he lists a feast of rich adjective, food and adjective, choice adjective, wines, adjective. then says the adjectives. Yeah, sure. Juicy rich food, pure choice wines. Um and and makes it clear that like this will be what the feast is, but those who do not follow the Lord, those who stray from that path will also be removed and taken care of because the God whom we look to save us. He's also who is going to, who his hand will guide us up the mountain or off the mountain, if you know what I mean. A response to Psalm then, uh, Psalm 23, uh, as Scott and I determined, like, Psalm, any more response to Psalms, I feel like, are just one or the other. And Father, we got a banger this week. We brought a banger to come visit you. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. But it's important because typically we just go with the response. But when you get into this psalm, it's actually, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's classic, classic psalm. Everyone should go check it out. I feel like I'm at a funeral right now. (laughs) Yes. Because of the funeral banger podcast. That first reading reading is a a big, huge funeral reading. Mm. And then you got the Lord is my shepherd. I mean, yes. the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Is that it? That's one of them. I mean, there's like, I mean, there's like so many versions. That's the one that we use on. I like it. I'm excited for this weekend to hear. Let's have everyone chime in with what version you hear at your guys' masses this weekend. Yeah. Uh, our second reading is uh, from uh, Philippians chapter four, verses 12 to 14, 19 to 20. I think in here we might have maybe the most tattooed scripture verse in, in the world. I, I, I also by tattooed. Uh, I think this is like like flip this actual version. There's a clothing here. company oh, named like after this. It's yeah. on people's tattoos. Yes, like yeah. people are getting this chapter verse. Like John three sixteen. Yes, Got it. but uh, the specifically the I can do all things through him, in Him who strengthens yeah. me. Get big team Tim Tebow vibes here. Yeah. Tim Tebow used to have a Philippian. Is, what is that four thirteen or is yeah. that or something like yeah. that? He always had that on his little eye black things. Um, mm-hmm. I found that interesting. I was a big Tim Tebow fan because of what he was trying to do anyway. uh, But in this reading, we hear this, that I can do all things to the Lord who strengthens me that still I share my distress, but Paul is telling us he, he knows what it is to be humble. He knows what it is to have abundance. He, the Lord has shown him all of these different ways, but he knows most importantly is that with the Lord, he will survive all these things and all these glorious riches will be brought to us by Christ. And then we have our gospel reading. Short form, long form, Father. Uh, short form. Mm. All right. I'm going to read both. I mean, we're going to do the because when I was pre-reading this, it really, really threw me for a loop outside the short form. So anyway, I'm excited to discuss. Matthew 22, 1 to 14. I should say before this that I'm always, I do always appreciate you go with the short form. But anyway, <laughs> Jesus said in reply, Or Jesus, again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched servants to summon the invited guests to the feast for for his son, or to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the, to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets, gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. So that's then, the end of the first one. Yes. First option. So yes. that's... Alternate ending one. They went out and found these people, bad and good alike. The hall was filled with guests. The word of the Lord. Or you continue. That seems like a real positive ending. 
But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, my friend, how is it you came here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. The king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. Plot twist. Plot tw- yes, major plot twist. <laughs> All right. There's my two-minute drill. Father, did Jeff get anything wrong? No, I think he stayed very close to the biblical texts. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> That's good. You're, you're really nailing the non-answer <laughs> answers today. Uh, what are you thinking about preaching on this weekend? Well, I made a a mistake. I actually did want the long form. Mm. So I'm glad that we did read the long form. So oh, good. Okay. Very appreciative for that today. I, uh, I think every priest probably has like their biblical images that are very powerful and strong for them. And for me, I love the wedding image and the spousal and nuptial analogy of scripture. And I love this passage because it starts off with a king who's giving a wedding feast for his son, which is God the Father throwing a wedding banquet for his son, who is Jesus, who is going to marry the church, which is all of us. And he talks about those who um, were to be espoused to him, but uh, he did not choose them. And then he ultimately talks about how he goes out and finds all the misfits and all the people uh, and welcomes them to the wedding feast. And then he breaks it down to this collective sense of who's who's invited to the wedding banquet down to the very individual sense. So the the individual who is there that's not in their wedding garment is the is, is ultimately the individual who chooses not to adhere to the life of virtue. So. One of the great images that we have in the book of Revelation, which can be really looked at as a whole wedding feast itself, Mm -hmm. is the wedding garment. And again and again, it speaks about those who are dressed in white linen and those who are surrounding the throne are dressed in white linen. This is the whole reason. And my my parish at at this point, like they, like when they hear a gospel like this, they know that I'm just going to talk about it. But like, what color do you wear on your baptism day? White. What color do you wear on the day of your first Holy communion? White. White. What color do you wear on your wedding? White. White. What color do I make all of my confirmation teenagers wear? White. White. What color does a priest wear during mass? White. white. What color are my sometimes servers? green? No, but your alb is a white. Is oh. white. What color are my servers wearing? White. White. Oh, white. What color is going to be placed on you when you're rolled into the back of the church in the day of your funeral? White. white. Paul. All of this happens because of our baptism. On the day of our baptism, our parents. Even though it wasn't Halloween, they dressed us up in a costume because they wanted us to look like our end our our, our end goal. They wanted us to dress for success. Mm-hmm. And so they dressed you as a saint here on earth. Huh. And so all of every baptism single, dress for success is one of my favorites of yours ever. That's every great. time that we dress up for a sacrament, we're dressing up as our end goal in mind. And we all need to have a vision for ourselves, a dream for ourselves. And the church helps us to visibly do this continually all the time in a very, very good way. And so this individual who's being thrown out, like it's his own choice. Like he made the choice to not put on his wedding garment. Mm. And so um, sometimes people will talk about the fact that there's some historical biblical evidence that even at big wedding feasts, like the, 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 per, the, the person hosting the wedding garment would even what wedding feast would even have wedding garments for people to put on. But the reality is like you can break it down just to the, to the individual. So Christ marries the church, which is everybody male and female, but it, Christ also intimately marries every single one of us. No homo here. I was like, like throws I work with high school kids, but like, <laughs> yes, that even, that even meant that, that even means for you men <clears throat> that Christ espouses Every single one of us and our intimate communion with him is the espousal that we're all called to have. And so his choice to not have the wedding garment on was a choice that he made. And it was either the casting off of his faith, um, the choosing to not live a life of virtue, of prayer, of intimacy. And so um, it's not just like, oh, he just forgot to put his, his, his wedding garment on. I didn't know it was, it was, it was a deliberate choice that he made. I always like to remember that people don't go to hell because 
uh, Jesus is a mean person and doesn't love them. It's because they're, they've made choices, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas they like to say we condemn ourselves. So, so I just, the, the, the spousal analogy, I think is just the route that I'm going to be going this weekend. And then th- that should then affect everything. Like, how do I love, how, what, what do I do when I'm in, what do I do when I receive our Lord in Holy Communion? What do I do when I'm in adoration? Um, yeah. How does my intimacy with the Lord capture my whole entire essence like if i'm if you're married to your wife and mm-hmm. you're married to your wife that is that's your vocation that's your calling our primary calling is holiness our primary calling is to be a saint and i'm going to do that by all the more that, that might that have intimacy uh with my spouse which is our lord and i think it's also great you know interesting as well you know we've been doing a lot of talking recently i actually had a meeting here at the ars coffee house with about 11 high school boys and they want to go deeper in their prayer. And so we were actually talking about, okay, what is the prayer? We have vocal prayer, we have meditation and we have contemplation. And most Catholics like never get past vocal prayer, let alone to meditation. But contemplation is, you know, we literally have cloisters where religious sisters enter into contemplative prayer. Like that is, Mm -hmm. that's what they do for life, for life. And, we we sell ourselves short all the time. And so there's two great books that I'm introducing to these young men, The Fire Within and Prayer Primer, about, both by Thomas Dubé, which speak about that everyone, everyone, no matter their state in life, is called to a life of contemplation. Uh, but you have to actually like enter into that. But when I was speaking to these young men, and I, whenever I talk about like the end of the spiritual life for every single one of us is that intimacy and every single mystic will always end up in the spousal analogy of that intimacy, whether, whether it be John of the cross or Teresa of Avila or uh, Teresa of Lisieux or whoever it is, say Catherine of Siena, you end up with this beautiful spousal analogy. And um, yeah, being a Christian is yes, go out and love people, do great things, serve the Lord, wash your brother's feet. But it's also about that intimacy with the Lord. And this is a beautiful opportunity to preach about that wedding feast. So I like weddings as well, by the way. My sister's getting married. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Uh that that was really beautiful. I go ahead. I was just gonna say you mentioned like that intimacy, and we're all called to be mystics, but it seems sometimes like a very far off reality yeah. from where I am today when I look at the people that we look at and you know, saints of history that we call mystics, right? And I think part of that is being more receptive to that intimacy with our Lord. I think that's a big hurdle to get over sometimes, especially when we get into this mancho culture and, and uh, a reality that we have to try to live up to a certain standard for like men in particular that, you know, opening up to that intimacy with our Lord might be more difficult. What, what are like some baby steps that we can take? So I just think that actually, no, huge, huge question there. So thank you. And I mean that, like, I think the first step for me is always silence. Like we, we have got to get over a society that is way too loud. I'm not at all going to tell people to stop listening to this podcast. Um, so we'll but take a moment. Of I, I listen to it every week, but we need silence. Like, so one of the things that, that, that silence is going to help us to do is, is and this is, this is where like, the more that we grow in perfection, in the spiritual life, the more that you're going to see yourself be virtuous. So Teresa of Avila speaks about this, that one cannot grow in the spiritual life unless they're also growing in virtue. And in fact, you know that you're not growing in the spiritual life, you're not growing in virtue. And so this is one of the, the, the side effects is that the more that we are able to love, the more that we're able to enter into silence, the more they're able to just waste time with people in, in, a, in a good way, the more they're able to like, all of that is ultimately some way dependent upon my interior life. So if I'm able to spend time in silence with the Lord and listen to the Lord, I'm going to be better off at listening to my wife, to my children, and to my coworkers. It, it, there, there is a direct relationship to it. Um, so that's where like the balanced life, someone who really is like sp- seeking after the spiritual life will also be an, indiv- an individual who's thriving in their marriages and their relationships. Okay. So, so silence, I just encourage silence, silence, good baby steps. 
yeah. Uh, there's a sign that I have in my office that says, I wish that more people were fluent in silence. Yeah. That's good. What do you got, Jeff? Uh, no, I think I like that. That is good baby steps. I so, I mean, you... I, so I mean, this for like, just like, so if we take 1% of the day, 1% of the day is 14 minutes and 40 seconds. So like, what would it look like if we just gave 1% of the day to being silent and just resting with the Lord? Like, what would our world look like? What would your, yeah, 1% of the day. No, that's what I'm saying is I, I agree. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I know that for myself, something I've often battled with is like, I'm afraid of that silence. Yeah. Like, and I know it, I'm, I'm like well aware it's something I'm what, but it doesn't make it easier that like, I'm often afraid that like left to that silence is the time when I realize like, I kind of suck. And like, I get in, 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 again, in like a positive way, I should be evaluating these things and I should be seeing these things and where these shortcomings are. And I should be in, taking that to confession and taking, I know all of those things. It doesn't make it easier. It did. It, it's, it's a frightening thing. And create the times in my life. Like I know I'm better off the times in my life when I have created that silence and created that time, but it's so easy to slip away from because it's hard. Mm. Just like so many other things. So I, I try to spend a lot of time in silence and, uh, but it was like, even sometimes like father, I try to spend in silence, but like, it's just crazy. And my mind just goes nuts. And I'm like, okay, then get out of pose it now. Like don't, don't run from the silence though, but then at least like, get a post-it note and start writing things down. Like maybe God is the one telling you those things you need to write down. Like maybe those are things that you need to do and you need to have another list and you need to verbalize and you need to get it. Like that, that's at least gonna be a start, right? Is at least taking the time to just sit without distraction and to empty my mind. Like that can be a start. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to say like, you know, what are the practical tips that you have for, entering into that sounds good. I wholeheartedly believe that that is a huge part of it, but like turning off the silence in your brain is like half yeah, the battle. So, and I almost need like, you know, 5% of my day to be able to offer 1% of silence. Yeah. So that is my number one tip is post-it notes, like wherever you're sitting, wherever you're at, like, and realize that if I'm going to say, okay, let, let's say I'm going to say 15 minutes in silence, 14 minutes and 40 seconds, I'm going to mm -hmm. tag on an extra 20 for the sake of 15 because I'm OCD. Um, and do it for the Lord and do it for the Lord mm -hmm. and in yourself, mm -hmm. you might end up only spending actually one minute and really just like, even just say, let's say, let's say good prayer. Let's say if, if what, what, however we want that to be, but that, that sense of emptying out, like we can get into all these like psychological aspects of stuff like this. Like, but like, so if you just sit there and you wrestle with what's going through your mind and you write down relationships that are broken. You write down people that you need to be reconciled with. You write down things that you've said that you've regretted. If you write down the six things you wanted to buy that you didn't buy yet, or the things that you need to say to your kids or get done before the, the weekend, I'm just going to tell you your mind. It's the fact that you just took that time to just sit and even just get that out of your mind. Mm -hmm. You will be, you will be more mentally healthy. Yeah. No, I think it's really good advice. I, I, somebody told me the tip once of like, sometimes like if, if something's on my mind and I can't go to sleep and it just stays there. But if I, if I write it down right. and so then it's like, like almost it gets out of my mind and onto paper, then I can go to sleep. So psychologically what's happening is, is your, and, and I always then like direct people, like you then need to act on those things. It's like my post-it notes from my prayer become my, my priority to-do lists if you set a habit of acting on those things, you will have so much more peace mm. because you're like, okay, it's out of my mind. Like I'll take care of that tomorrow because that is the thing. Like I, your mind is telling you so that, that what you just mentioned there about it's in my mind and I'm laying in bed and like, oh, I really don't want to get up. I'm tired right now. I don't even want to write it down, write it down. And then your mind can rest. Mm. It, it, that right there actually proves the fact that getting things out of your mind on a piece of paper is step one. Have you read the book atomic habits? Uh, I have not, but I've listened to some YouTube videos about it. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're saying things that come from that book. You ever, uh, you ever find yourself in that scenario? I've done this where I'm like, oh, I'm going to write that down. And then I go to write it down and I'm like, 
oh, I keep just not being able to, like the pen won't get to the paper and I can't do it. And then at some point in there, I realize I'm, I'm dreaming about writing it down. I've like, never been. In I'm that. stuck in. The, oh, I get stuck. I, this happens to me all the time. I do the same thing with like drinking water. I, I like in my dream, I wake up and I go to take a drink of water. And my thirst is never quenched. There's some real depth there. Um, until the, until like what feels like an eternity of me trying to drink this water and not having any water it ends up in me actually waking up and being like, Oh, I wasn't actually, I was just dreaming that I was trying to drink water. Are there any cash dream talk, interpreters? I shouldn't talk about my dreams anymore. It's a weird place. I don't know either of those. Uh, you never had any of that happen? No, like you never, dream you're doing something. Never had any of that. Uh, I do have the fact where during my holy hours, I write things down in a post-it note, and then I look at it later in the day. I'm like, I have no idea what that is. I'm walking around my staff. Like, do you, do you know what this says right here? Like, I can't read this. Like, what what, what, what do you think I was trying? And then What I was look, the Lord trying to tell me here? I look at it like before and after. I'm like, maybe it was associated with those other two things. And then I can't, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> cool. So, so just good. me. Got it. I don't remember my dreams. Yeah? Not really. Rare, rare, rarely do I remember a dream. I also, I also sometimes I try to follow them. I sometimes have a dream where I end up in a a situation where I have to like defend my family and I'm like fighting somebody and I'm like punching, but like my punches won't land. I'm just like going nowhere. My arms like barely move and I'm just, and I'm, and I just feel helpless. And then I like wake up and realize that like, yeah, anyway, you're in your bed. Yeah. Worried that I'm like flailing and my wife is like, what's going on with you? Elizabeth has a black eye. <laughs> no, don't say no. <laughs> From your, I'd be so your phantom punchy. No, she's hit me in her sleep, allegedly sleeping. Allegedly. But... <laughs> All right. Are we ready for some dumb questions slash yeah. bunch of questions about ours? <laughs> I none of mine are actually about ours. If oh. you want to, if you want to just dive in on more uh, coffee shop questions. Well, I mean, I think this is like the coolest thing. It is the really of the cool. planet. Like, yeah. if anybody is from Indiana. Ohio, you should come to ours. If you ever find yourself traveling down I-74. Between... In fact, it, what's going to be awesome as well is when Perfect North Slopes opens up, mm-hmm. opens up. Anybody who's Catholic that also goes skiing at Perfect North Slopes, we are exactly five miles uh, north of Perfect North Slopes on State Route 1. But also, yeah, I mean, it, it is, we're open uh, Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Our address is 68, uh, 6988. Uh, North Dearborn Road, ours cafe and meeting house. Dot com. And there is not a website. There is a Facebook oh. page. And not five minutes off the interstate. Are uh, you going to have a sign on the interstate? Uh, like one of those have, green exit signs? We have it's talked a... about that. We don't know what's going to happen with that. You do have a billboard on the interstate. I've seen it. That's not, it's only during the summer festival. Okay. But yeah. I just saw it recently. I took a picture. I thought it was really awesome. Thank you. Um, I've always, this is the closest it's come. So like, you know how like, I don't know. I've always dreamt of going to, I like going to adoration or spending time with Jesus, but sometimes I just like to have a cup of coffee and like have a cup of coffee with Jesus. Well, can, and... I, can I throw out that we also have perpetual adoration? So if you come down to ours, you can go to the perpetual adoration chapel at the St. John the Baptist Dover campus. So you have adoration, Jesus, Jesus, adoration. It's all there. I was just going to say, this is the closest I've come. Yeah. Yeah. It's so a cool. lot of people are coming and getting their caffeine fix. And then going to see Jesus, or they go to see Jesus, and they come here. And uh, you know, what Sheen says, "Prayer plus Jesus is a conscious, or prayer plus coffee is a conscious conversation yes. with your our Lord." Yes, Something yes. Like he he promotes drinking coffee before your holy hour. So beautiful. It is beautiful. You got a good thing going here. Well, um, you're doing really us. awesome and pray just amazing us. things, Father. Pray for us. It's and I promise to our listeners, you're, we're not making any of this up. Yeah. Check out the YouTube video. Welcome we're to, at, yeah. We're at a Catholic coffee shop. Yes. A ministry of the church. Named after St. John Vianney. Oh, that's right. Because he was the, the what he of was ours? the cure, which is the pastor of ours. The, which is actually cool now because I'm, I'm the cure of ours. I'm the priest of ours. Oh. You are the canonical manager. I am of the priest of shop. ours cafe, which is like. Totally humbling because he is, I'm wearing my the art. priest in Solidum. I'm wearing, oh. yeah. So Father Hollowell as well is also the curate of ours. And um, I'm wearing my, so Take don't you. be any uh, socks today. I'm also uh, in coordination with that wearing uh, my St. John Vianney t-shirt today that has the curate of ours on it. Awesome. Uh, That's... <laughs> so what do I do? Um <laughs> So were you going to ask me those questions we have written down? I don't know. Oh, I had, 
Okay, we we've, we've been doing a series of questions. You're you're a listener, so hopefully you're prepared somewhat. Hey. Um what best advice you have we're we're like into first assignments for priests now, right? Mm-hmm. They've been doing this for a little bit. So mm-hmm. um I've been asking priests like what's your best advice to a new priest who's like newly ordained? And this is something I'm sure you give you have a lot of seminarians that come from your parishes right now. So you'll have uh, this. I'm sure people seek this advice from you. What are three pieces of advice you would give to a new priest? Uh, my first question would be, you had a dream. That you, you had a dream in seminary of who, of how you would live your priesthood and who would you be? And how are you not living that dream right now? And what do you need to do to start making that dream happen? And to know that that is possible. The the dream that you had of being a saint and loving people and changing the world is still possible. And don't give up on that dream. That would be my number one piece of advice. My second piece of advice would be the fact that uh, if your butt is not in front of the Blessed Sacrament for at least an hour every single day, like you need to totally check your life. And if you've already fallen to the lie that my life is busy and I have too much going on, that's horrible, horrible. Uh, it's a trap. It's a really bad trap and you need to get out of it right now. So make sure that you're spending time with our Lord in the blessed sacrament, like in a really, really, really beautiful way. And then I would just say your best ability is availability. Like you didn't get ordained for yourself. You didn't get ordained for any other reason, but to give yourself to your people. So just make sure that you are being radically fully and totally available to your people and be a saint. Those would be my three pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. Those are good ones. Was the coffee shop part of your dream? This was a dream. Yes. Um, We have a parish purpose statement. All saints exist. uh, We're forming the saints that God is calling us to be by providing faithful teaching, authentic worshiping, and passionate service. Our faith and actions that nourish engaged Catholics, inspire unengaged Catholics, and invite all to Christ's church. So our parish purpose statement has three double prongs. So faithful teaching, authentic worship and compassionate service. We can evaluate all those. We can, uh, we can really make sure that we're doing those. We can set goals to make sure we're doing those better. When it comes down to the other three of nourishing the engaged, inspiring the unengaged and invited all to Christ church. Clearly we can talk about nourishing the engaged, like faith formation and Bible studies and so like that. When it comes to inspiring the unengaged and inviting all to Christ church, those are very kind of out there. And we wanted a tangible way to make sure that we were actually trying to fulfill that part of our purpose. And that's where this coffee shop kept coming up is like, this would be a tangible way to make sure that we're inspiring fallen away Catholics and bringing them back and inviting people who are not Christian at all Mm. to come to the waters of eternal life. And we have to encounter people. And we thought this would be a real human way for us to encounter people and to be with them and to just love them. So our baristas and people who work here are trained tremendously on discipleship on charity and like they're here first and foremost to love people uh giving them their drink is second it's awesome that is awesome when you were saying the the three piece of advice you got a little bit emotional in your voice what was behind that i uh probably a little bit of a broken priest at the moment right now but i really love the priesthood a lot and i just i want yeah, I want to be a saint. I want all priests to be saints. And uh, yeah, here it's just such a beautiful life. And, uh, and you obviously care about your brothers and you want them to remember that and know that. And I'm sure that, like you said, I think you said it very well when you said that uh, it is a trap to fall into the I'm too busy or there's too many meetings or there's too mm-hmm. much stuff. And like, if that's the case, then you have the power to reset that. Correct. And, and, you take correct. the things off your plate so that you can really focus on being a saint. And, yeah. yeah, I would say like like it's 2023. There are so many resources out there. Like you mentioned, Atomic Habits, or like there are so many resources out there for 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 individuals, particular for priests to be successful. Like we need to get out of our caves and start actually living our lives. Mm. And you know, we were making a joke earlier that there's 35 buildings in Dearborn County and seven churches and four parishes and a school and a coffee house and whatever else. Like, like life, like like we make choices. Like everybody does. I would like to say that, you know, a layman who has three kids or five kids or eight kids 
like he like his life is crazy everyone's life is crazy life is about choices um but you can choose what is most essential and what is most important for you to yeah to fulfill your calling so and prayer is at the highest of that it is it is at the highest of that for us as catholic men and particularly all the more for us as priests but clearly for all of us all right that's a good place to end yeah unless you got one more burning dumb question i mean maybe i'll dumb it up for the finish father how do you feel about bell choirs Oh, yeah, I forgot about the bell choir. We have a bell choir at St. Mary's in Aurora. They play from the choir loft. I will say that I think bell choirs that pray, play from the front of the church. Actually, I don't like music technically in the front of the church, period. But uh, bell choirs in the front of the church, I think, are like they're, I'm not like it's a beautiful noise. Uh, but it, I don't mean like noise in a negative way, but like I just don't like things that are distracting. Like, to, like I, even oh as, as a You're, layman, we're right, we're right here. As a layman, like my, my eyes were closed. I mean, I never had kids. Like, so, right. So I was yeah. a layman. Like, my eyes were closed at mass all the time. Like, I think it's all distracting. And so um, we have a bell choir, St. Mary's in Aurora, and they are, they are amazing. They're so good. And they play two songs at a mass when they play. Uh, they do a prelude and then they do, um, I think it's the offertory. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't. Uh, <laughs> Father Ryan McCarthy. Father Ryan McCarthy just Come on in. into ours. Come on in. We join our podcast. Do we have another headset? We do. Oh my gosh, this is so fantastic, Father Gar McCarthy. Welcome to ours. What do you think? It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Father Ryan McCarthy from uh, Holy Rosary in Indianapolis uh, has just arrived to ours. This is um, he would be one of our. Um, well, Father Michael Kucher has been here. Father Hollowell, of course, pastor has been here as well. I think this might be our third priest, first priest from outside the deanery to to be here, and he likes coffee, and he likes Saint John Vianney a lot. Do you like to sit down? He is here, by the way. So All Saints Parish also has a priest retreat house, known as the Saint John Vianney Retreat House, and Father McCarthy is beginning his retreat today, yeah. and so on his way to the retreat, he is stopping off in ours, which is always a great place to come when you're on a priest retreat. I don't have uh, headphones for you, but I can hear you. Pardon? I said I don't have uh, headphones for you, but we can hear you, I think. Okay, so I have to keep this off so I can... There you, there you go. go, yeah, you go. keep an ear off. So welcome welcome to ours. Thanks. And also, welcome to All Set for Sunday. <laughs> our podcast for busy and distracted Catholics. This is a weekly podcast that goes over the Sunday readings oh. um, for busy and distracted Catholics. Like, you know, Catholics that have kids. And So is this live or is this recorded? It's recorded. recorded. Okay. Yeah. And we're on the YouTube. Oh, that's exciting. Hello, YouTube. Yeah. Hello, YouTube people. See what you guys thought about but... This will be my first social media appearance ever. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to blame me. I would blame you. I know. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Uh, I probably have a podcast like this because of you in some way. So, oh, no. yeah, you can, you can, I'll blame you as well. Thanks. Father McCarthy was, it has been a huge influence on uh, my life uh, spiritually and probably most famously of all of his exploits preached at my wedding. It did. Since we just talked weddings. We we're still married. So it must have worked. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He did take some of that preaching to just roast me from, there from the uh ambo but i loved yes i did that's why it's uh, always good to have a that is one of the things as a priest it's fun when we do weddings and of people that we know and anything like it, it is great to have friends that are priests because it makes things agreed all the more personal i agree it would be odd if i didn't have any friends but that would be honest as well. <laughs> your uh your roommate uh Father Dufresne is. Uh, let's um, clarify. We live in the same <laughs> rectory. We don't share a room. <laughs> he said he, he has top bunk, but uh, no, <laughs> he is a regular guest on our podcast too. Yeah, so, heard. Yeah, yeah. I also called you different. Uh, called you the other day and left a message. Did you not get it? Okay, I got a voice. I got a call the other day. It said no caller ID. Restricted. I, I went. Know. I, I know it's him. No, wait. So I didn't. I'm. This is this is the Lord divinely putting you in front of me because I went to that voicemail on my phone and I went to hit the speaker button, but I have big fat thumbs and I hit the delete button instead. And then I was like, oh, no, because I couldn't even call the number back to find out who it was. Oh, my <laughs> I God. Share, I don't share my cell phone number with anyone. That's fair. Whenever I have, whenever I, have I always know it's him. He's uh, the only one. Well, now I know because all the spammers use fake numbers now. Yes. Well, so I'm the only restricted number left. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> I am restricted number. Well, I can't wait until we're done recording and I can find out why you call it. This is seriously that has been stressing. Me. That was like See, hanging Saint on John, me all week. Saint John Vianney brought this about. He did he's a great scene? Oh, amazing! This is great, Father. This is I was so trying to think of an R joke, but I didn't have anything. Yeah, R. <laughs> so are we are we discussing something particular? Or do you just sit and chat? Well, we, we already did the that Sunday one. readings, and we talk about what Father's going to preach about, and then okay. I ask dumb questions. We were just talking about bell choirs. Uh, I was going to share. I'm a, I actually, hot take, like, I love a bell choir, but I feel exactly like you do. Yeah, I can't what you were just saying, like, it's distracting. Because, do you like, like, do you like it's the a... true bells or the chime style bells? I mean, this is a big controversy in the bell choir. <laughs> I'm so excited to dive in. Uh, I think I like both. But the distraction to me is, like, it's a very intense art. Like, these yes. they, the people in yes. the bell choir get really into it, especially the ones who are really good, and they've got, like, four sets in front of them, and their hands are just flying all over the place. But I can't not listen and just like stare and just be totally right. enthralled. At which point my head is turned away from where it needs to be during the mass. And so that's what I wanted to talk about. And you speaking of that, when I was a little kid, my parents took us to Epcot and we went to, I think it was like a in, bell choir mass at Epcot Center. No, no, hold on. I'm about it. It was is this Italy. No, I think it was in Germany. <laughs> okay. And there was like a place like a Hofbauer house, like restaurant there. And you know how they often have like, dinner entertainment mm -hmm. and there was a woman who came out and she had like 20 bells not the ones that like lay down that you ring like that mm -hmm. but they were propped up and she like she was like running all over the place and she was wearing like some like german little outfit she had pigtails and she was, it was she was rocking it. you wouldn't know the name of the outfit <laughs> thank you um which which style of bells are you into father I've been different because I don't, okay. I don't play the bells. Um, I'm, I've just <laughs> listened to people debate it before, and I didn't know since you had a strong opinion about bell choirs. I didn't know if you had uh, just that I like about. I feel bells. like sometimes they take a bad rap, but I was like this weekend. I was listening. I was like, "This is a really beautiful. It is a beautiful it noise. Beautiful. Like it is a be just beautiful to yeah. listen to." Yeah. But it's... but I would appreciate if it was played behind me. Yeah, we have a. I was saying we we have a child's bell choir and then we have an adult bell choir at St. Mary's in Aurora and they're, they're they're excellent. They're very very good, but they're in the choir loft, so you don't you all you do is hear it and it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, I just yeah, distractions are. Do you have a bell choir? We, Bloom and Christie School has a bell choir. Oh, wonderful. We do not, um, and they are the chime style bell choir. Mm -hmm. My general inclination is the your. The, the chimes seem more effective, like an easier style to play. But if you're going to have a bell choir, they should look like bells. I mean, yes. Hmm. So more the handheld ones. Yeah. Right. Like what's the chime? Um, what they, they look, look like? more like a, like a single xylophone kind of, it's got a handle with it and oh. almost like a, like a gigantic tuning fork oh. in All right. different notes. And they've got like a striker on top and you bang it like that. I had no idea we could have such a comprehensive conversation about bell choirs today. That's because you had no idea that Father Ryan McCarthy was going to walk into the room <laughs> and this man can have a comprehensive conversation about any topic I've it ever is heard. True. A lot of things. Yes. God I, has given me a wide experience of the world. Yes. I wish we had more time, but I think we got to wrap it there. I think so too. Hey, thanks for listening this week. <laughs>